time since 21 years in the German Foreign Ministry and now since a few weeks in San Francisco. I'm, I'm very happy to be here and I think that um, I'm, and I'm very happy that you, you are here actually. There are so many people who are interested in, in Germany and in what we are doing in the field of, of energy policy. Uh, my plan is actually to, to tell you a little bit <coughs> about sustainability and the Energiewende, as we call it, the, the transformation of German energy policy. And then if you like, if you have some questions on that matter, but also if you have some questions on, on other issues related to Germany, uh, I would be happy to, to talk to you and to discuss with you. Um, we don't have these PowerPoint things because I always tend to fall asleep when I'm on the other side of the, on the receiving side of the, of the, of these PowerPoint presentations. So I hope, uh, and my objective is to make this uh, 45 minutes interesting for you. And uh, I would like to encourage you whenever you have a question or whenever you have a comment, just just let me know, and then we can we can talk about this one. Uh, before I start, just one question: Can can all those of you raise your hands who have been to Germany before? Let me see so that I get a feeling so how many experts we have in the room. Good, thank you so much. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, <coughs> well, the Energiewende is maybe one of the most ambitious projects which we have in, which we have in Germany. It's, um, it's about transforming not only um, <coughs> the very narrow system of producing and providing energy to people, it's actually um, the starting point for transforming the whole economy of Germany and the whole the way how, how we live. So that's why I think that's, that's so important to us in Germany, but also to many people who live in Europe or who live in other countries who have similar, who face similar challenges. Um, our objective is to make energy supply secure, affordable, and sustainable. Um, and to give you one figure, today we have we produce 24 percent of our energy uh, of renewable energies. So it's it's mostly. It's mostly wind, but we also have biomass, hydro, and photovoltaic. And uh, <coughs> these are, this is a long way. We, we started many years ago in the, in the 90s of the last century. We started uh, with introducing renewable energies in, in Germany. And um, to, to come to a situation where we produce almost 25% uh, of our of our energy by renewables is a was a big effort for us, and it's still and it's still ongoing. <coughs> uh, in this year and this moment, the most of our energy actually, apart from renewables, is produced by coal power plants, which somehow is not so sustainable. In which somehow is also causing causing lots of problems, but we we have um, a roadmap set up until the year 2050 um, to um, have a 100% sustainable and uh, based on renewable energies energy mix. So uh, there is uh, there are very specific objectives which which we have have set, which we want to achieve in the next years and <coughs> uh, ahead, which will help us to to move more and more to renewable energies. One, and maybe the most difficult and important point in this whole process was uh, the phasing out of nuclear energy. So um, we had almost 25 nuclear power plants in Germany, and I studied, I myself, I studied um, Slavic literature and ma not ma micro macroeconomics actually, and I always during my studies I, I we had this issue of what about the cost of nuclear energy? So of course, if you ha look at the cost of nuclear energy, the, the the net production cost of a kilowatt hour, maybe that that's relatively low in comparison to production costs of uh, uh, let's say photovoltaic or wind energy. But what mostly was not in that calculation was the question of what to do with the nuclear waste which is produced in these power plants. And um, 
but we we in Germany we still don't have an answer for for this question and it's may maybe one of the most contentious issues in Germany right now so we decided to quit nuclear energy by the year 22 so that's very close uh, we will shut down all our power plants <coughs> by the year of 2022 so um, this has multiple consequences. One is, what are we going to do with the nuclear waste? And in Germany, we decided that we have to take care of the waste ourselves. So there are plans of, well, da why don't you ship it to Africa? Or why don't you put it in the, in the, to the cosmos with, with the rockets or whatever? But this, we, 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 ha we agreed, and as a society, we agreed, we have to take care of this problem, which we have caused for generations and generations to come in our own country, which I think is a, a good decision. The issue and the problem actually is that what does this mean? So you have highly contaminated nuclear waste and we don't know where to put it in Germany. So um <coughs> what we do is at the moment there's a, a high level commission which has been set up by the German government and by the German federal states and by um, scientists in order to find the best place for uh, final storage for this highly um, contaminated nuclear waste and mm, so that's actually the, the well, well, 10 million dollar question because no federal state no city no community would like to have uh, a storage facility for uh, <coughs> nuclear waste in its, its neighborhood um and that's one point the other point is this storage facility will have to be taken care of for the next 25000 years so who's going to pay for this and when we go to to talk to all these energy big en energy companies who ran or still run the nuclear power plants well they would say well why that that should be the state should take care of this which is one point of view but this is going to be extremely expensive, extremely dangerous. Uh, as far as security is concerned, how does this facility, what, what should it be like so that whatever, no water gets in and takes um, radioactivity to, to, the, to the groundwater and all this kind of stuff. So this is a big debate going on in Germany. <coughs> we don't have an answer to this yet, um, but we set a deadline, I think, it's the end of next year. It's after the we have general elections as well next year, so I think they set a deadline after the next general elections, uh, end of next year, in order to come up with a plan which will then lead to the finding of this um, place where we where we would store the, the the highly contaminated nuclear energy. I don't know how this problem is solved is in the, in the United States. So if if somebody of you knows and, and what thoughts on this, I, I, would, I would love to, to talk to you, to talk with you about that um, in a moment. So, <coughs> changing the energy policy, getting uh, uh, rid of nuclear energy, um, and there's a big consensus in German society that that's the right thing to do. Uh, it entails taking care of the waste, but it also entails thinking about uh, other ways of producing energy and what we do as and, and did and do is we built mostly in the northern part of Germany close to the northern sea uh, we built wind parks where we generate lots of, of wind energy which is good because it's mostly even offshore so people would not be disturbed by the by these big towers but most of the energy is needed in the south where the industrial heart of germany is and we don't have the necessary grid we don't have the necessary the, the, well physically the cables to bring that um, electricity south so the next big problem which we face is to renew our grid so we have to build thousands of kilometers of um, grid for for our for our um, electricity and that means, again, who would like to have these high masts with the energy, uh, the, the el um, electricity cables on, on his, in his garden or in his community? So uh, 
to come up with a plan which somehow connects wind energy, the production of energy with the consumption of energy, which is in the south, is a, is a big task which we are facing. But I think we discussions have been successful and now the, the plan for this new grid has been, has been set up and I think we are going to build it in the next months and years to come. So it's, there are still some, some details, but it's not such a, such a contentious issue as the, as the nuclear waste issue. So um, that's, one, that's one element. And um, <coughs> in order to achieve our objective, to be in the year 2050 completely non-reliant on uh, carbon fuels. Um, there are other dimensions, other dimensions related to the use of energy or to the storage of energy. So let me see. Um, well, f first is the question of e efficiency. So we try to be highly energy efficient in Germany. That goes to construction of houses. So when I moved here to Los Altos a few weeks ago and I saw, for example, the windows and the doors, well, I was a little bit surprised because that's well, that, that would not be the way how, how, not because of wood or not wood or other, but just as far as isolation is concerned, or in, you say insulation is concerned, as far as insulation is concerned, that seems to me, but in Germany this is very important. And uh, the European Union actually, many people criticize the European Union, but the European Union actually, they, they issued a directive. So those of you who are in the European Union business, do you know that that's something like a law which, which should be enforced for the whole of the European Union. So there's a European law saying that starting in, in the year 2021, only zero energy houses, so energy houses which, uh, with a, which are so well isol insulated that non, no energy would get out of windows or doors or whatever, or that it's generating its own energy so that it would not need additionally addition energy, additional energy coming from, from other sources. Only those houses are allowed to be built in five years, which I think is quite ambitious, but uh, we, are, we are going to do this. <coughs> So changing en energy policy would also entail building other styles of houses. It has a very, very um, consequences in many fields. So how big the windows are, how, how um, high houses might be, um, how you do air conditioning in, in buildings. So it goes to, to many details as far as construction is concerned. Um, And then the other thing is for, for, uh, for being efficient is what we, we have programs in Germany for promoting um, of putting in new heating systems in, in old houses. So many of the, uh, the old houses, they have old whatever, um, old heating systems and they, they we, we give uh, loans. The, the, the federal government has a program which give loans to people who want to, to change the, the heating system of their houses, uh, which are very favorable. So many people did this and still still do this in order to come up with, f uh, to get a better use of the energy which, which we use for heating. <laughs> yeah, and then maybe uh, two other points which are um, Interesting. The the question is um, mobility. So we we have we also have um, electric cars. Maybe not so many um, as Tesla going around already, but we have BMW. We have other uh, providers or and, and other companies who, who who sell electric cars in Germany, and we have a plan that by the year <coughs> 2021. We, are we should have one million electric cars in Germany, which is not, uh, not, not so much, but still it's ambitious. And the thing is, once in Germany we set up these plans, we try to keep up with them and do it. So uh, we, might have a, we might have to set up a system for charging, a charging system all around our cities and our autobahns. We might have um, either German car producing companies 
of uh, electric cars and there is Volkswagen and Mercedes who are uh, bringing new models, electric models, uh, this autumn on the market. So um, they're not so fancy as Tesla, I have to say, but they, they might be more energy efficient. And um, then we have um, one other thing when it comes to mobility. We have these car sharing sc uh, schemes. You, you might know them. I think in Seattle also there is this car sharing um, project uh, by BMW. So what, what these car uh, uh, companies did, they checked actually when you buy a car, how much time would you use it? And then they found out that actually in, in average, if you buy a car, you use it just be between 5 and 8% of the time. So you spend lots of money, you have a nice car, but actually in whatever, 25 hours, you just use it for 5% of the time. So they came up with these car sharing schemes, which are very, very popular in Germany now. So all my friends and colleagues in Berlin, for example, they sold their cars and they just have this, I think it's car to go and some different, so you just get a code on your smartphone and you see that there's a car and you see where the sh cars which are there available for sharing, where they are parked and you just go there, open it with your smartphone, drive somewhere and then drop it there and then go. And that's, that's actually, I think, a smart idea and it's, it's, it's working good. It's mostly working for the time being in the big cities <coughs> because if you're somewhere on the flat land and you just put the car somewhere in a forest, that might be difficult somebody to, to find somebody else to get around and pick it up. But um, so we have, uh <coughs> we have these schemes and I think that's also an answer of making efficient use of, um, of, of energy and of coming up with a new idea for mobility. So, um, and of course mobility, it's pu public transport. Public transport in Germany is very important. Um, sometimes it works very well, sometimes it's difficult, but as I think in principle, many, many people use public transport in, in Germany and that's of course a way how to reduce traffic on the streets, how to reduce uh, CO2 emissions and it's, it's good for the for the environment and to uh, bring down the greenhouse effect. Um, yeah, I think these were all the points I, I actually wanted to mention. Um, <coughs> I wanted to share one thought with you. So uh, when you are interested in sustainability, you think about your future, but also you think about the future of your country, of your children of the planet. So there is some, there is a higher responsibility you all have. So you are now you are students, but at one point you will be in companies, you will be teachers, you will have to take decisions. And um, you should be aware that this is a, a high responsibility you have because you are you're the ones who will shape the future. So if you're interested in sustainability, uh, I just told you a little bit about what what is happening in Germany, but what might happen in also in other Euro European countries. So I think we have many things to offer, technologically wise, but also as far as science is concerned, as studies are concerned. So if you want to see the future of modern energy policy, you should go to Germany. You should go to Germany, you should study in Germany, you should go and have internships in German companies because as I tried to explain, <coughs> changing the energy policy of a country has effects on actually all other aspects of life, as maybe digital companies also do, but on a different field. And we think, and that's what many experts in, in the field of, in, in this, all these parts of, of energy policy tell me and tell us in the consulate that in Germany we are in that respect we are the pioneers and if you want to I came here to the, to the to Silicon Valley and to you and to California in order <coughs> sorry in order to have a look at the future what 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 the, which is shaped here in in the field of digital economy and new inventions which come up but if you're interested in sustainability if you're interested in energy policy in engineering then Germany is the place to be. So, um, 
I said we are the pioneers. I learned a, a, a saying here: um, the pioneers get the get the arrows, and the settlers get the land. But it's not it's not arrows which are waiting for you in which are waiting for you in Berlin or in Germany. Germany is um, it's an interesting country, many many interesting cities, and um, we have schemes which w help to help in order to help students to go to Germany to study at German universities to have internships at German companies. It's called German Academic Exchange Service. Maybe you have heard about that. So you could go on that website, or you could talk to me, or you could talk to your professors here. They they luckily will will be willing to help you and to sh to tell you a little bit more about about these possibilities. And the good thing is, actually, you would not have to speak German because I think 25% of all studies uh, programs are in English language in Germany now. So there's no study fee. Don't have to do have to have to speak German. So apart from this aspect that the future is there for as far as energy policy is concerned. So there are many good reasons to to think about at least uh, going to Germany and study there. But um, I think this is it from my my side. And now we can start with questions or discussions or you just can. Yeah, please. Well, th that's that's completely open to everybody. So it's, uh, of course, there are, <coughs> we don't have a unif, no, maybe I'll tell you a little bit about the German federal system. We have federal states, 16, like you have your states, and these states, they are relatively independent. And within these independent states, like Bavaria, universities are very, very independent. So they just love their independence. So it's very difficult for a federal government, which has no authority on state level, on the level of, let's say, Bavaria, and which still even less inf has less to say to a, to a university, it's very difficult for us to bring them online or to tell them, oh, why don't you set up a program for foreign students, which, is, which just goes for... So it's good and bad, as always in life. So when you have a specific interest, actually on this, it's very easy to find the, the right university for you, and then they might be more inclined because you have this specific interest to to accept you and to take you as a student. But there there are no specific majors or, 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 to, or fields of, of uh, research which are which are under focus. So we are quite open in that respect. Yeah, please. Photo sorry, photovoltaic. Yeah, so I maybe I, I pronounce it the German way, you know, Germans, they have this, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yes, please. Well, the thing is, it, it affects already now the planning process. So if you think of uh, b building a house uh, in the near future, even if the law just would enter into force um, 2021, you would wish to meet these uh, levels of or requirements for, for building such a house. So for example, uh, what we have in, in Germany is that we have a, uh, each building has an energy passport. So we have insti institutions which are certified to issue energy passports for houses. And you know this thing from these uh, refrigerators where you have this A, A3 plus and B, C, when it goes down, you know that system where it goes, how energy efficient they are? Same thing we have for the houses in Germany. So this becomes an economic factor. So when I, let's say you have a flat in Berlin and you want to rent it out to somebody, then these people, they would first of all have a look, okay, where, th where that flat is, be is located. They would have a look what, what would be the rent, but the third thing they would look at would be wh where's the energy bars, and then they would see because it's <coughs> the better it is, the lower the additional costs you will be you will have when you when you live there. So uh, <coughs> this is uh, by law an addendum to the to each uh, lease contract has to be this energy pass, so that everybody knows actually 
So you could have a relatively low rent, but then you could have whatever, 500 euros for water and electricity and whatever. So people would maybe shy away from, from going to houses which are not so energy, which are not so energy efficient. So that, that has actually major impact on all of the things which, which go on right now. Please. Um, but what what we did is we did a co actually almost a complete mapping of Germany where, well because we don't have so much sun for example <laughs> as, as you have here, um, mapping for wind power, wha where it's economically viable to have wind power plants. And then we came up that there are a few places on ground, but most of the most efficient places are just offshore and you don't have the issue of neighbors. So because uh, it might look quite romantic to have one of or two of these towers close to your house, but most people wouldn't like it. And there is some noise which is related to that, so I it's easier. Nobody would bother, no neighbors would say, I I'm, not, um, I'm against this, make law, have law, law uh, suits and, and all these kind of things. So it's just easier and more, more efficient to have these offshore parks. Yes, please. Well, we have a temporary storage facility which is called Konrad, for whatever reason. So it was, we have a mining, we had mining in Germany and there was one, how do you, when do you, we dig these holes in the ground, so we have a very, it, it goes down very deep, I think it's two kilometers. And it's uh, that down there, that some, some there are the, the stones and the, the ground is such that it's good it, it doesn't let water go go down somehow. So they put it there, uh, but that's just a t a, that's just a temporary solution. So for the time being, they store it on the sites of the nuclear power plants themselves, or they bring it to Konrad, which um, works for the time being, but which will not work for for the future. That's why they are looking for this final uh, dep depository for 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 highly contaminated nuclear waste. Yes. Mm. Yes. Well, that's maybe also a solution. I don't know. We don't have to <laughs> we, we also have islands, but we, we would use them in a different way. <laughs> so, but there were other comments or maybe lady here and then you can. Yes, please. Well, I have to give you a little bit of history on this one. So, uh, we were a country, in that respect, we were a quite normal country. So until the 80s, we had all the same coal and power, nuclear power and gas power plants and whatever. But then, um, actually, we had a movement, the, the green movement, so for um, environmentalists and all these people, and they formed a party, which somehow w became successful, which became uh, parts of uh, which which had members uh, of the party in our in our parliament and they were even for s a few years they they were a co coalition partner in our federal government so this uh, understanding that we have a responsibility for our nature and for the future of our children somehow is very strong with many people in germany so that existed already and it was let's say 15 20% of people think that way and feel that way and they are willing and that's what maybe I didn't mention. Of course this at the beginning it's expensive, right? To transform all it's not only the, the production of the production of energy or electricity, it's also the all other production processes have to have to be well they have to see how, how that which f effect this has when when they just cannot have their own whatever the aluminium production uh, 
uh, enterprises? If, how, how do they work if they don't have their own power plants which, which, are, which work on, on coal? So that um <coughs> it costs money, but many people in Germany were and still are willing to pay a higher price for uh, clean energy. So what we have in Germany right now, and that's also, I come back to the history because I didn't finish that, but just w in Germany we have, we, we there's no monopoly on the, on the um, electricity market. So here, I, I don't know what the electricity company here is, in, in Los Altos it's PG&E. So you just can go to PG&E and they say, okay, we connect you and that's it. In, in Berlin or in Germany, for example, in Berlin um, you have 120 providers. And you say, I only want to have electricity which is produced by water power plants because I don't like wind. So you just can have this. Or you say, I don't care how ele electricity is produced, it just has to be cheap. You also can have this. And then they would uh, have certified, they, that all this would be certified. You know, they, they you could be sure that those offering just wind energy, well, electricity produced by wind energy, that would, that would really be the case. So people would check this. They would go and check, because people, many people want to make sure that they don't get electricity which is produced by nuclear power plants. And most of them, they don't like coal or, or, uh, as well. So actually, all young people, they would be willing to pay whatever, 50 euros or 40 euros a month more, but to be sure that they, they have clean energy which they, which they consume. So the Green Party, powerful movement in the German society. And then, of course, we had the uh, Fukushima, which the, the accident in Japan. And then somehow that triggered this feeling that we should, we should make a complete change and a fast change in our energy policy. But this the, the, the I think the basic motivation was before Fukushima. And there were decisions taken already before Fukushima to get, get out of nuclear um, energy. But with later in, 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 in later years, please. It, it gave a big push to this movement. So in uh, 1986, we had this um, horrible accident at the power plant in Chernobyl, and then this this somehow brought many people. You, we had we had big m demonstrations, sun m many Sundays all around the country, against against uh, using nuclear energy. So that that was a big factor as well. So we go this way, please. Sorry, I, I, uh, can you a little bit be more specific? What the, what the question is, what I didn't get it. Sorry. Is this on? Yeah. Well, that, yeah, yeah, I, I, now I got the question, sorry. Um, yeah, of course, but we, we people they in Germany like to plan somehow. And they like to set up some deadlines, and then they, in principle, they that's how we move forward. So, so that's we we think that, and of course, setting deadlines, let's say for the for these energy companies who produce still produce nuclear energy, is also important because they have to have some time to build back so or to de demolish the nuclear or not to build demolish but to build back nuclear power plants. So this takes time. And then we, of course, have to make sure that when we don't have nu any nuclear um, energy anymore in Germany, we can we have other energies in place or an, uh, other production techniques in place which um, replace nuclear energy. Of course, we have a European grid, so we could get Euro uh, other electricity from other European countries. But the question, the, the idea is that we will be self, uh, well that we could produce. Uh, the energy we consume all by, by our own production means. What I forgot is we had in the, uh, let's say, in the 90s of last year, we, uh, of the last century, in the 90s of the last century, we had actually a big um, support program, big subsidies of the, of the federal government 
for setting up these solar panels on roofs. So you would, when you go to Germany, you would see many houses with these solar panels, and that uh, uh, allows everybody to produce his or her own energy. And even if you produce excess energy to, to feed it into the grid and sell it to, 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 to the, those companies uh, offering, offering energy in, the, in that specific region. Please. Uh, not really, because we have in that field we for the, for agriculture we have the common European market, and we have other countries who who have produced excess food so that we just could not not import but buy just in France or in in other parts of of Europe and 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 bring it to to Germany. So that 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 never was an issue that which somehow was was seen as a as a risk. So I think there was please. Well, we, we disassembled already some of them. Some of the older ones have been or have already been disassembled, and they have be have to be stored. So you can you just shut them off. And then I think a friend of mine is an engineer working in that field. So uh, you shut them off, and then I think you have to wait one or two years, and then you can start um, r building back or um, the the um, power plants, and then they have to be stored. Most of that material, which of the power plants as such, it's not highly contaminated. So you could put it to Konrad, to this uh, temporary place, which would be, but some of the parts would have to be put at other more safe depositories. There was some other question, please. No. <laughs> Sorry. We go to this side. Please. Yeah. yeah. Well, I not in not there is no public. Mm, there is no there is no opposition which is voiced by by people let's say, who would go, get, go out on the streets and say, we want our nuclear power plants back, something like that. That doesn't, ha that, that doesn't exist. But, but, just one second, Th there is opposition in a way that, of course, uh, those companies who run nuclear power plants, they have an interest in running them as long as possible, because th the longer they run, the, the more uh, profit they can get out of that. And they have ways of trying to influence policy and trying to to create exceptions and trying to create a public have an influence on public opinion, but this doesn't work, right? So because I I, I personally would say I, uh, ninety eight percent of people in Germany j just they they are in favor of that. They see this change of the energy uh, policy as a big chance for Germany. We are world world leaders in many many fields as far as technology is concerned, as far as thinking through the whole process, what that in, in what what entails this transformation is concerned. So there is no public opposition, but there is of course there are people who would like somehow not they they know they cannot turn the clock back, but they know that they maybe can influence the processes in order to get gain a little bit more time. Well, 
companies running nuclear power plants, they are mostly huge companies. So they know that they have seven or eight years now to think about what they do with their people who work in this field. And of course you need experts also to, to deconstruct this whole thing. So when we stop in 2022, it would need, we have to wait after you switched it off, you have to, to wait two or three years, whatever, t before you can start reconstructing them. And then that would take five or six or seven years. So most of the workers working there, they, they would be involved in these processes as well. And others, others would, be, would already now start within that company to, to have other jobs and to get other qualifications. So that's, that's I think, that's not such an issue if which somehow, it's, it's an issue for the companies, but that's not, not an issue for politics or for the public. And they didn't complain about this. I think we don't have so much time, but please, two more maybe, yes. Well, this is indeed a, a different aspect of politics in Germany. Um, what I can tell you on this issue is that um, since the beginning of the German Federal Republic, since 1945, we, we had a law welcoming and offering asylum to all people from all around the world who are politically persecuted. And this also goes today. Our federal chancellor, um, she, let's say, uh, took a decision in the face of this human cata uh, catastrophe and things which were happening to refugees, saying that we, we would be willing to, to accept people from Syria. And she was welcomed by the broad majority of people in Germany, and still is. So I, I so no, so many people, you know, they voluntarily they help, they, they accept people, uh, refugees from Syria in their homes. They train them. I have been myself in Berlin um, visiting some of these camps. So there are thousands of people, just ordinary people, who just volunteer to to help, and they have long lists of volunteers who would like to join. So it's it's you know um, we have national, we have let's say extremists in our country and we have a right-wing party which is in, in, in the rise, that's true, but that's not the majority. And of course when you follow the news you see negative things which happen and which are, which are worrying to, to me and to everybody in Germany as well. But of course you don't see all the reports of thousands of people who just in, their, in the evenings go and um, give foot soccer practice to, to the boys who, who come there from Syria, from, from Afghanistan, from Iraq, from so many countries. So we have, um, we feel a commitment which goes back to our history, to what we have experienced and what we did in, in the last century. And we think that this is a, a moral commitment and we stick to this and we uh, know that that's not, not easy for many people in Germany as well because they feel wha what's going on. We have media which again somehow highlights many negative things. That's the way how media works. But uh, we have many, many very positive things and I think um, it's difficult but um, I think this won't change. So that's part of our constitution and this openness for people who look for political asylum, this will stay. And I think we just have to do a better job in managing how to deal with on the on the governmental side. And because, again, it's not the federal government wi which is responsible. It's the federal, the, the states and the, and the cities and the counties. And so it's not so in some counties and some cities this works very well. In others, it doesn't work so well. How how to deal with with the with the refugees? And it was a big number, a relatively big number in a short time. So we had been a little bit overwhelmed, maybe as well.
to go and see a job. Um, feel free to do that. And I would like at this point to thank um, Herr Heinz already for his presentation and for answering your questions. But I would also like to say we are able to stay here for a while longer. The next event will be in start in here at 2.30. So, but maybe a few more minutes of answering questions would be fine, right? Well, I'm here and when, when if there's anything I can say to you, <laughs> it might be my pleasure. Yes, don't leave, because there is something which is very, very uh, nice. It's, it's called Bedeka. It's actually a travel guide. So we have many Bedeka since uh, hundreds of years, I would say. But this is a, a special one, which is on renewable energy. So you can go through it, and you would see all different re uh, renewable energy projects in different parts of Germany. So I put some of them there on the table, and you can grab one and, and take it with you if you're interested. Okay. Thank you.